Now let's get to Concrete Utopia, South Korea's official Oscar submission. It's select theaters Friday, December 15th. On the press release, it said New York and LA primarily, but look, Google Concrete, Concrete Utopia, it might be playing in your neck of the woods at Friday or in the coming weeks. I don't know. I just have a feeling that this movie might be buried amidst all of these Oscar movies flying forth back and forth these day, this month and running at 129 minutes. This movie hopefully will not be ignored. It centers on it's literally post-apocalyptic where Seoul is now collapsed. Everything around it is pretty much rubble. Most of the people around Seoul are dead, buried under rubble. Ironically, or in a fat fatalistic or f a weird twist of fate, there is one sky rise, one high rise called the Huang Gung Apartments high rise that is still left standing. And the people who are surviving there are the residents. There has to be a way for all of them to survive. So they nominate this person. They call him the delegate. And he's played by Lee Byung Hun. He's very, very good in this movie. He has his own share of mysteries. But anyways, as the story progresses, the delegate wields his power on the people living in this complex and their main mission is to survive in this high rise what does that mean well possibly evicting people or shaming people who are not actual owners of these apartment complexes these apartment units and also everyone outside the sky rise meaning everyone else in the world should not are not allowed to come to their high rise or else they may be beaten up they may be even possibly killed etc etc so this is a survivalist thriller set in south korea concrete utopia bruce perky take it away yeah I, I really ended up liking this movie a lot i think you are right that this could easily get lost because first of all i saw the name concrete utopia and the poster and i was like i don't really know what this movie's about i thought is this a documentary about people who live on the streets or something or live in like rubble of bomb out of areas that have gone to disarray in certain towns or something you know and it even starts out i, th I thought it's going to be a documentary because it starts out with kind of this documentary footage stuff and it's talking about sort of how i guess in korea right now there's kind of a, a lottery system and it's kind of like a prestige thing to get chosen to live in certain buildings that are cooler or more prestigious than other buildings whatever that was kind of an interesting context the movie starts with and then like you said immediately there's this massive earthquake and everything's turned into rubble except for this building pretty much what i really enjoyed about this and i'll be curious to hear what you guys think um is it ends up kind of putting you in that situation of like well what do you do in this situation and you know you could say oh it's like some of these zombie movies but i think it's a little bit smarter than that a little more interesting than that whereas like you're in this building the people are reasonable they're just trying to survive they all get together and talk about it like what do we want to do how do we want to keep order how do we want to make this a livable place so they're really starting from this logical everybody were working together to try to make this work kind of a thing even the way they picked the delegate you know like there's a fire breaks out in one of the apartments and he bolts into action and some other people do too but he really goes out of his way to try to stop this fire because obviously a fire in the last apartment building <laughs> in the world for them as far as they're concerned is a really dangerous thing so they're like this guy is a guy a man of action we can trust him let's make him our, our leader what i like about this is it be, kind of becomes it could be social commentary obviously you know haves and have nots you can you can apply it to the world if you want to do that but it's also just a fun kind of post not fun but interesting and engaging post-apocalyptic survival story as far as that goes and just the idea of how do you go from being these you know just people like we are now to all of a sudden stopping at some point and looking back at yourselves and going like have we become negan have we become that group? <laughs> Are we them now? Are we the, the bad people? So there's, a, there's, a, there's an element of that that's really, really fascinating. They also do a great job of giving us little short backstories of some of the characters when it's needed and at very kind of opportune moments to kind of recontextualize stuff we've seen before then. That's really yes. great. And there's a main couple that we follow. They're great because that gives us a grounding. We're not just with the whole group. We have a main couple and they're kind of the heart and soul of this movie. And then of course we have I would say four or five other key figures that we keep coming back to within the, the crowd. Uh, and, and they're all interesting. All the incidental thought, characters are interesting yeah, as well. They are incident interesting. And like a lot of South Korean movies, it doesn't exactly go in the way that you would expect in the kind of the Western version of this. So I was appreciative of that as well. It gets emotional. It gets a little bit violent, you know, fairly violent, uh, but not like super duper violent, not like zombie movie violent. It has really good apocalyptic effects. I thought they were pretty seamless as far as that goes. So um, I, I really like this movie. There's one effect where you feel like you're on a roller coaster and it's, 
<laughs> you're going, oh my gosh, what just happened? There is a sudden, let's just say there is a death, which uh, it's not a spoiler, but there is just a death where I go, that just happened. What the heck? <laughs> this is weird. So very some really interesting action sequences as well along with the drama eric holmes i was gonna say that's not a spoiler at all because you said there's a death and you were amazed by it or floored by it and i can't think of which one you're talking about oh of course yeah right yeah yeah i'm, <laughs> not, gonna, the, I'm not gonna give hints yeah, i'm like the, I'm not the, give hints. there's there's more than a few of those this movie was incredibly frustrating in all the same ways that don't look up was because this is a mirror to our society, like a thousand percent. And as frustrating as it is, that's why I love this so much. You know, we had the delegate, I guess, how he's chosen. And their their first their first action is let's get rid of everyone in the apartment. It's like, well, I understand it, right? that with more people cre- means you need more resources, but the ideal thing, but humans are resources. Hey, uh, Bruce, if we kick you out of the apartment, what happens if you're the only pilot in this apartment and we find an airplane and we can fly somewhere? Well, now we can't because you're gone. Hey, Greg, what if you're a scientist and you can create or an engineer and you can create something that would help us live in this one area, but now you can't because we kicked you out. So first of all, they voted someone to be a delegate or president or leader of some sort. Their first action that they took was the worst one that they could have taken. It's like, hey, if we're going to organize Let's organize all of us. Let's all work together because we have a bunch of us. We can work together. We can search more areas, so on and so forth. As humans do, we tend to shoot ourselves in the foot and work against our own best interests. And that's exactly what they do in Concrete Utopia. It's frustrating to watch, but it's incredibly realistic because we're idiots. That's that's what we do. We like to think we're the smartest, smartest uh, beings on the planet. We came up with the idea of what makes the smartest person. So we're, we're, we're pretty stupid. This movie kind of shows that. I will say like the opening scene, they got the like news scenes or whatever, and then they kind of pan across. And at this point, I, I was like, you, Bruce, I, I had no idea what this movie was going to be. And it kind of pans across. And then you just see the tsunami of concrete, just <laughs> concrete and lava just like coming up out of the ground. I was like, what? Okay. Hold on. What movie is this? Do any of you know what the the budget for this movie is? Because this yeah. movie looked absolutely fantastic. Looks great. Yeah. Because it, if there great. were, again, like Bruce said, if there's any seams to the special effects in this, I didn't see it. It all just kind of, I felt like I was in that world. It's very tense. Like Bruce was saying, it's, it's extremely moving at parts you're, you get surprised at. You're, I mean, I was surprised all the way, whether it be the violence, the emotion, the twists in the plot. Uh, just, I think overall, it's a perfect story. Yes, Eric. There's a line at the end, which you can cut, you can cut this out. For this which I think, I, I think I, it's I, a very I, important I, line that we had it about I'll, living. I'll, I'll, I'll about say living? You, no, no. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. No. See the line. I, if you think it's a spoiler, cut it out. But okay. the, someone asked someone what was wrong with them. And there was something along the lines of, uh, they're just regular people. And I think that's kind of the whole point of this. It's like sure. you're watching the people do these horrible things, and these people aren't special. They're not inherently evil. They're just human. They're stupid idiots like the all the rest of us. You know, when you have this kind of Lord of the Flies kind of thing going on, you know, when you see it in the throes of it, your your thoughts like, what's wrong with those people? When the question you should be asking is, is this normal? Because I think this is normal. I think if I was in this position, I'd, I would be among the mob doing horrible things to each other. Of course. Yeah, that's the, the, these are some of the tough questions that people ask. There's a sequence in this movie that is, at, I, I can say, heartbreaking, and we can point to several heartbreaking scenes, but I'll just say this. People being human, they will compromise their own values just to get their next meal. And sometimes it's as easy as surviving, and sometimes you will sacrifice a lot of your morality in that process. So anyways, Concrete Utopia, for me, it, it's one of the best films of the year. I loved it. I really love this. I can't wait till the Blu-ray re- release hits it on an action level, on a genre level, and also on an emotional storytelling level. Very intelligent film. Concrete Utopia, five stars for me. Bruce? I would say, hmm, it will probably, it could get to five stars. I'm going to go four and a half right now. I also mentioned, I won't say what the scene is, but there is an uncut shot close-up of a person's eyes 
as they tear up and start to cry that I was just floored by. And I guess I've seen a lot of those in the movies, but that one was just gut-wrenching. <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> a lot of great stuff with all this, with all the action stuff that's going on. And like Eric was saying, with all the special effects, the best special effect that the director uses is the effect of the close-up. So very well done close-up in this movie, close-ups. Eric, your, your rating. Uh, five stars probably should be 6.9 stars. This thing's a banger. And you said this was a uh, South Korean, South uh, Korean uh, Oscar submission. So hopefully oh, it'll, in, ho yeah. hopefully this one wins. This movie's rad. And <laughs> yeah. you should, you should do a, you should do a triple feature with idiocracy. Don't look up and concrete utopia. Oh, and by the way, I I'll mentioned add, to you, I'll add the mist. <laughs> oh the mist yes the mist actually that's it that's not bad that's not bad but uh I, I think i mentioned to you guys like the as i'm watching it like i message you guys i'm like i'm waiting for the utopia part no, <laughs> I, yeah, no. <laughs> because bruce you mentioned like the the with the title you don't know what's going on the title is completely ironic like it's cynically so it's like oh yeah totally utopia but you know it's like no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't. It wasn't until about halfway through the movie where I realized, oh yeah, this the title for this movie is tongue in cheek, a thousand percent. And again, let's not get it twisted. This is also an engaging and entertaining movie. We're talking about social issues and thematics and emotional investment in the film. It is a very engaging film on an entertaining level. So entertainment level. So that is Concrete Utopia. Four and a half for Bruce. Five for me and Eric. Yes, Eric. I would also say Hollywood blockbusters. Take notes. The action scenes in this and the special yeah. effects in this movie are amazing. Let's just say there is a car sequence in this movie that. Oh God! May, oh, let's just say let, let there. Get ready for the car sequence in this movie. Hold on to your stomach. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Hold on to your stomach. Yeah, Eric. You're gonna call this concrete tsunami. <laughs> I know. Okay, that is concrete utopia. This is cinematics.